I wanted to discuss the difference between name brand, the actual formula, and generics, okay? Because with some drugs, the generics are better, no doubt. But with some drugs, the name brand's better. And there's a reason why you're getting like, okay, for example, everybody's heard about the old American Anadrol, Syntex, 2902, or even the, um, the one after that, which was uh, a, sub a subsidiary of it. But it still was the, the dark bottle with the, with the white cap and the, and the red label on it, okay? Now, everybody remembers, you know, oh man, you couldn't take two or three, you'd, you'd have nosebleeds and all that other stuff like that. We got a lot of generic anadrols out there and I've never heard anybody compare it to that. But I have heard people say the Iranian anadrol was the same and way back in the, the and also anapalon. The anapalon is like the same. But when you get oxy, oxymethylone, it's, it, the generic form is not quite the same. This is in my opinion, okay? Uh, I think with Viagra, it's 100% the same. Cialis is 100% the same. But I think what happens is, is okay, for example, real deca durabolin, to me, when I take it, I can take a very low dose and it works really well and I don't hold water off. It makes me actually look good. Natural and decanoate, on the other hand, I gotta take more of it and it makes me hold water too. The same as durabolin versus uh, natural and phenylpropanate. And an actual name brand Anavar versus uh, Oxandrolone. Now, some people will say, okay, you know, I take a, a particular company, Balkan, it, 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 uh, any, any of these companies, Alpha Pharma, whatever, and they take it, it says, oh, okay, I take it, it, it works really good. It does. But compared to the actual name brand Anavar, who people say, oh, it was 2.5 milligrams, I only took like, you know, uh, much less dose of that. There's a reason. They actually keep the, the actual formula a secret. Now, after a certain amount of time, of course, the patent goes up and they can make it slightly different. But in a lot of cases with American drug companies, the actual formula is really kept in a vault. And people are able to basically take the drug, reverse engineer it, copy it, and then make it something very similar to it. With the natural and the cannulate, it all has to do with the formulation of it in the ester part of it. Correct, honey? Yeah, so interesting point on that. You're right. It's you can't just make a blanket statement and say that all drugs are better if they're in their pharmaceutical state, the way they're created by the drug company, and that generics are worse. Or you also can't make the blanket statement and say generics are just the same as as the pharmaceutical uh, companies made them. So it, you have to go drug by drug. And you, you're exactly right. Um, Viagra. I don't think anybody can tell any difference from any generic. To compared to uh, Viagra Blue, uh, Blue Pfizer Viagra. Uh, now Deca, uh, that's an interesting one you brought up because that is one exactly, very specifically that some of the top pro bodybuilders will not use UGL Deca. Their coaches will not let them use UGL Deca. It is pharmaceutical Deca, and it's only fifty milligrams per ml. Name brand. So they're willing. To, We're talking yeah. brand, not not just. I mean, not UGL. Even if it's even if it's right. generic natural and decanoate, which is pharmaceutical, they still won't use that. They want to use Deca Durabolin, the name brand. Right. Organol. Right. And and why? Yeah. You were you were out in Kuwait. You you saw it. What? Why? Uh, better results off of way less dosage. Way less. I mean, like, you know, people are taking, you know, a gram of DECA uh, from UGLs, but some of these top pro bodybuilders might only take 250 milligrams yeah. of the pharmaceutical DECA and get far superior results, but pharmaceutical name brand DECA. Yeah. Right. And have you noticed the same thing with Anavar and Anadrol? I have noticed it with Anavar, Anadrol, and DECA. I've had Delatestrol, which is name brand uh, test and ante, and I've had uh, Dep Depo Testosterone, and they're very, very close. They're very, very close, very close. But Anavar, I big time noticed the difference. Uh, I mean, like it, even the look, the, the look of the actual name brand Anavar, my body got drier and harder than the generic. What, what, what did you see yourself personally? Uh, I didn't, I didn't uh, use or see any of the name brand. Uh, Anadrol, yeah. Anadrol, they also use name brand. Anavar, uh, not so much. I don't think a lot of the top 
a lot of the biggest guys use Anavar much, uh, actually. More of the more along the wind straw lines when they're trying to dry out and cut up. Um, so I, I've noticed. So I haven't used a lot of the pharmaceutical. Well, we keep, I keep saying pharmaceutical, but you're right. So name brand pharmaceuticals. Right. right. Um, but I have noticed. I have noticed with UGLs even, a, sometimes a very big difference in results from from one to another, and it's it's not necessarily a, um like one brand is always better than another a batch could be better and and i don't think it's i also don't think it's the milligrams i think it's the raw powder and trevor Mm -hmm. explains this to me and he actually loses me in the explanation but he talks about how these very very small differences with certain compounds can make such a big difference and just like you said at the other compounds it it makes no difference at all i don't want to lose you i don't want to lose you but let me see if i can get wrap this up with the whole golf on plate, okay? When we're dealing with the pure raws, like Trevor said, okay, you're, you're talking about a molecular weight of, a, of, of, I mean, how it was processed. If it was, if it was made with the absolute highest of highest of ingredients, the, the, the purest of purest of extracts and, and solvents and all that stuff, you're gonna have an absolutely low Dalton weight drug. That's the difference. The serostem makes you hold more water and actually in some cases makes you retain more nitrogen because they've given it to HIV patients that didn't eat hardly any food and it still made them retain muscle mass that they had. And in some cases, with even a small amount of food, even put on some muscle, but they were in a wasting state. The genotropin of all the growth hormone makes you hold the least amount of water, which makes a lot of bodybuilders not like it because they don't feel that swole off of it like they do off of the... Uh, the uh, I'm sorry, the nortotropin, like they do off the genotropin or the serostem. A lot of bodybuilders prefer serostem in the off season. The Dalton weight carries through with the crystal powder that makes every single one of these different uh, items, from the anadrol to the deca to so forth. And from the big, the, the, there's always usually a two part. The very first part has to do with the actual substance. If that's at its highest purity, then automatically you're gonna have a lower Dalton weight. Then you have the filtration process where it, this is where the UGLs do not have the equipment that the drug companies have. So there's two differences. You start off with either deca durabolin, which you cannot get the raws for. You can't get the raws for deca durabolin because Organon has that formula and they're just, it's, if, if you make it, believe me, they're coming after you, okay? That's how it is. But you could get the raws for Navdrol and Decanoate. So you get that, and then the filtration process is what makes it so that the end, the end up molecular weight of the substance is higher. Your body has to filter out those Daltons. The filtering out of the Daltons is almost like an allergic reaction, which makes you retain water. So when you see you're taking a UGL test that you're holding more water off of it than you would off of a name brand, that's the reason why. It's, it was cheaply made cheaply made compared to multi-million dollar facilities not meaning that it's cheap but understand that in the long run if you're taking multiple different substances that have high dalton weights you're taxing your liver and kidneys and so you could get better results off of a pure substance you know what i mean i mean we don't you don't, you don't think about it like that but just think about it if you had a, if you had a beer and you added water to it I mean, it's kind of the same thing. So when they're doing these, you still have in the same beer, but it, it, you know, still you have a 12 ounce glass with eight ounces of beer in it, okay? You could put two ounces of water in it, that's 10 ounces of beer in a 12 ounce glass. It's still the same amount of beer, but now by volume, it has less alcohol. It's almost the same thing with the lower Dalton, with the higher Dalton weight. It's actually not as pure of a substance, so when your body breaks it down, you don't get the best results. In other words, Name brand Decadurabol in 50 milligrams seems to work almost as good as 100 milligrams of Nadrol and Decanoate. It's not that it's not this case with every drug. Like like we said, I mean, there's no, there was no difference in, in a lot of these drugs. There's absolutely zero difference in. But in some cases, that's the difference between a name brand and a generic. And people don't realize it. They think that they could just go ahead and, and buy it, but. It all breaks down to something that we can't even see. It has to do with the molecular weight. The higher the molecular weight, the more impurities it has. The lower the molecular weight, 
the easier your body can assimilate it, absorb it, and get better use out of a lower milligram. Did that clear it yeah. up? Yeah, that's good. So, some of this is outside my expertise and, my, uh, and experience, but I want to try to add some little pieces along the way uh, that I think the audience thinking about these things consider. Um, the molecular mass of these things uh, also affects the permeability, like whether it goes through cells easily or difficult. So the, the less molecular mass it is, for example, when we're, I'm experimenting a lot with transdermals. So if something's got a lower molecular mass, so it's like smaller or less dense, it's easier to fit through the skin cells much easier. And so I would assume that it's also similar to uh, absorbing into receptors or, or transporting around the body easier if it's a lighter molecular weight. Um, also, nothing is 100% pure. Um, when these things are manufactured, even the pharmaceutical, you know, we say 99.9% .9 pure. Well, that one, that 0.1% or whatever is, it can be significant when we're talking about things like hormones that are very specific, hitting very specific receptors. I do know that to be true. Uh, at Tony Huge Labs, I, I have a list of experiments that I'm doing. Uh, some of them have to do with molecular mass and permeability, uh, transporting through the skin, uh, and then also comparing different compounds. So it's really interesting you're bringing this up right now because after the video, I'm going to go back to my research notes and, and see what uh, experiments are coming up so I can talk to you about uh, some of those that are coming up and get any insight you have or any additional experiments that we this should be running. Start. I mean, we're let, letting people know what exactly what purity means because a lot of times people will be like, oh, well, you know, I'll take the 80% pure, I'll just use more of it. And, and then if we're talking with, with gear, if, if you're getting your raws from China and you're, you're not doing it right, that's what they call pit and stuff like that. Why it, it doesn't, it burns or it leaves a lump See, it leaves a lump because it doesn't, it doesn't absorb. And see, the, molecular, the lower the molecular weight, the easier it, it goes through the cell wall. Exactly. But, like but a, lot of, a lot of people listening to this are probably thinking, why are we talking about this? Because we're never going to have access to pharmaceutical grade gear anyways. But you mentioned Iran. Uh, I do have a lot of friends and fans that go to Iran to get their gear whether they use it there or they transport it back with or without a prescription, whatever. Well, they but can that transport is it back one of the best sources. They, they, can, they, they, can get a, they can get a doctor over there to get them a prescription to transport right. a supply back legally. And I'm sure yes, that's correct. Do it for the money. Yeah. Yeah. And it's an inexpensive country from what I hear. So if someone wants to get, you know, a plane flight is going to cost a lot, a lot of time. But by the time when you get there, um, the prices that I've heard on, steroids over the counter there is mind-blowing like you know it's it's cheaper to buy steroids than it is to buy bcaa's and protein powder oh yeah drugs are cheaper than food <laughs> yeah. it's, it's crazy i mean and, and and they're all available there's no prescription necessary you just need it to transport it back i i don't know you know even though my my, my parents were born there i was born here i'm not too sure if i would go just because you know the, the Americans can be a target in a place like that. We already know a journalist was was uh, held 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 prisoner, uh, so you know it may not be the best thing. But hey, you know, just speaking about it, Iran is not following the patent regulations that the rest of the world or the rest of America. We 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 enforce the patent regulations, so they're basically going rogue and they're 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 copying identically name brands. That's what they're doing. So you're getting, you're getting or, or you actually can get the name brands over there. You can get real Decadurabolin over there, name brand. It's a lower dose, but it's by Organon. Everything is, is you know, from the actual, the name, like Sustanon, the name brand from Organon and Ampules. Primabolin is also another one. I've noticed a difference too. The, the name yes. brand, you know? Yes, exactly. Primabolin is the number one, I, one that I hear. milligrams is better than like 800 milligrams of UGL to me. That's to me. What do yeah. you yeah, that's exactly what I, if everybody who's tried all, pharmaceutical and, and UGL gear, Primabolin's the one that they say, oh, what do you think about Primabolin? And I say, I, I never got that much off it. And they would, well, did you try pharmaceutical Primabolin? Every single time because they say, yeah, because I, I never felt it until I used the pharmaceutical Primabolin. And when but they do, always, but, but when people are looking for miracles of Primabolin, they still always do say it does take time. It still does take, you know, three weeks to really start seeing something from it, but then the magic happens. 
Yeah. Oh man. And it does too. And, and what, what, what was the a dose for you? I mean, cause there's so much misinformation out there about doses on Primo, but if you get real bear Prima Bolin or real Prima Bolin sharing Prima Bolin, uh, what, what, what dose works good for your body weight? I haven't ran a full cycle of the Primo. I still haven't given it a, a full shot. I've, I've done, I've done Prima Bolin at a thousand milligrams a week, a gram a week for a few weeks. And I still didn't notice much, and that was UGL. And that's where I'm like, why am I, why am I wasting my time with Prima? My, my general theory on Primabolin is why would someone take Primabolin when they can take SARMs that are more anabolic and oral and cheaper and have to inject so much uh, less oil? It's kind of what SARMs were designed to replace Primabolin and Anabar. Which, so that's kind of where I gave up on Primabolin. But, you know, since then, I've, I know a lot of people that use the pharmaceutical Primabolin and have great success with it. 